30k special rules explained, this time not in 60 seconds or less. It's time for a hot take as I make the case for a controversial rule. It's time to seize the initiative. My name is Mechanid, let's get started. Normally, in Horus Heresy 2.0, the player who deploys their army first goes first. In other cases, a player will be signed as the attacker or defender, and that will, according to the mission rule, determine who goes first. Failing that, the players will roll off, and the winner will get to choose who deploys first and therefore goes first. However, there's a catch. Most Horus Heresy The Age of Darkness Copyright Games Workshop missions also make use of the following rule, allowing the player designated to take the second turn a chance to seize the initiative and add a sense of unpredictability to the turn sequence. Unless a mission-specific rule states otherwise, or both players agree not to, the seize the initiative rule should be used. Seize the initiative. If the player who is due to go second wishes to seize the initiative, that player can roll a d6 before beginning the first game turn. On the roll of a 6, they successfully seize the initiative and they go first instead. This roll can be devastating. After planning your deployment, your reserves, your first turn, hell, even your whole game plan, having that all turn on your head can be a massive game changer. And having to rely on just one roll, a single one in six chance, can be very daunting. And it's no wonder that so many players choose to ignore this rule and remove all that uncertainty. However, I would like to make the case for playing with this rule less for what it does and more how it affects players' behaviour and how it can reduce the likelihood of massive alpha strikes, aka a turn 1 tabling, where one player carves out a massive advantage in their first turn before the opponent gets to respond. My theory is that if I know that I am going to go first, I can more easily define the flow of the game. I can force my opponent to be reactive while I am proactive. It's my game to play. In this way, I can be very aggressive and go for a massive first turn, an alpha strike, to try and cripple my foe before they have a chance to respond, and in the turn that I am at full strength. This is easy to do, because all this tactic requires of me is a non-zero amount of high-strength long-range shooting, something like last cannons or an artillery piece or two. But if I know there's a chance that my aggressive deployment could get jumped on, I am much less likely to deploy in such an aggressive way, and I must deploy more conservatively if I'm to cover all my bases. In this way, Seize the Initiative forces players to build in contingencies to their plan. Yes, I'm going to go first, but there's a chance that I could end up going second, so I need to deploy my units in a way that covers both my bases so that my opponents can't alpha strike me, just like I wanted to do to them. Likewise, for the player going second, it would be wise to deploy their units in a more flexible manner, so that if they do go first, they can make the most out of the opportunity and not just have their units in a defensive crouch, sometimes called turtling or castling, where they would have to unpick their formation to make use of that first game turn. In this way, the chance of a change of first turn can force both players to be more adaptable and flexible rather than playing rigidly, and this is one of the best things this rule can do. Also, several rules interact with Seize the Initiative. While uncommon, things like the White Scars Legion trait and the Recon Company Right of War both reference this rule, and by ignoring this rule, it is, in effect, a soft nerf, first to the Legion trait and to the Right of War. If neither player is using White Scars or a Recon Company, then fair enough, ignore away. But if a player has built a list with those rules in mind, then I'd recommend giving Seize Initiative another look. However, there are some counters. First and foremost, I understand the bad beats element of getting seized. To have to rework your whole game plan just because your opponent got lucky is a grim feeling, and can completely spoil your enjoyment of the game, especially when you have to rework your plans on the fly, or while your opponent is moving their minis and you're just stood there like a lemon. I believe this to be the reason why Seize the Initiative comes with the Gentleman's Agreement, the caveat that it can be ignored if both players wish to. Also, since the Seize the Initiative role is a 1 in 6, it's not the biggest chance in the world. If I feel like gambling, I can still deploy very aggressively on my first turn and just gamble on the chance that my opponent won't roll a 6, and my aggressive deployment won't get punished, which is a likely outcome as it's only a 1 in 6 chance. I would also say that night fighting is another good solution to keep a lid on the most powerful ranged armies, so consider using that if you'd prefer to have something more predictable in your games. I would also note that such a swingy rule having a built-in bypass clause is great, and while not every rule needs this caveat, it's nice to see that the writers have some nuance about it, and to give more power to the players in turn. Good stuff. Overall, Seize the Initiative is a small rule with a great depth of complexity. A few lines of text that can completely redefine the whole trajectory of the game. I'd encourage more people to try it out in their games by adding an extra layer of complexity and planning to your opening moves. What's your 30k hot take? And what's your opinion on Seize the Initiative? I'd love to see your take on this controversial rule. Stay tuned for more. My name is Mechanid. 
Thanks for watching.